So, hello guys and welcome to this week's tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to make this pretty cool Christmassy animation. Um, I hope you guys like it. I just wanted to get into the spirit of Christmas and just make something with ornaments. It just, it seemed like something fun to make. But, before I get going guys, comment down below what kind of like videos you want me to make because it will help me out while I'll make the content you guys actually want. And just also, before we get going, hit the sub button, hit that like button, it helps me out a lot. But, now, let's get right into it. So, I'm going to start off with this blender scene. I'm just going to... Press A, X, delete everything. Okay, now we've got this. So what I'm gonna do is now add in a curve modifier. So press Shift A and uh, add a curve profile, I mean, and choose Helix. So to add these, you just go into Edit Preferences. And uh, if you don't have that enabled, it's an add-on called Extra Objects, and you will get this. So we have this, and don't click up anywhere now. Just click here into the Curve Profiles, and let's start working around here. So I'm going to change the end angle. So that's how many rotations it does. I'm going to multiply it by two, by two, and then by two. So we get a 2,800 angle. And I'm going to increase the resolution to 1,000. So we've got 1,000 points. Last thing I'm going to do here is press here on the variable one, put in the number one. And you guys can see, okay, that made a Christmas tree. Perfect. Okay, now we've got a Christmas tree. I'm going to now apply to it a force field modifier and make it a um curve guide okay so along this path our particles are going to move so let's now start adding particles so what we need to do is add in the cube i'm going to scale it down a bit grab it on the x and then um go into a particle settings this tab here press the plus button and then just start putting in the numbers i will have uh 250 particles i'll give it an end frame of three, uh 180 and it's gonna last for 200 frames Okay, and that's pretty much it. So now we have the particles moving, but there's a lot of them, they're moving weirdly. So I'm just going to scale this up. Scale. Once I scale this up, it's going to be a little better, but still not perfect. So we go into our curve settings again, and the force field settings, and I'm going to increase the clumping to 1, and the shape to negative 99. Okay, so now we have our objects moving around this path. So I'm going to move our cube out of the way, and we've got this. Okay, pretty good so far. So, what I'm going to do now is start um, adding extra movement. If you guys saw in the animation, we have at the end, as everything goes up to the top, we have everything just exploding. I don't know, it seemed like a cool thing to do. So we just explode. So to do this, I'll need to go back here, and I'm going to shift it and add in a, um, what's it called? In a force field. So where's our fields? Force field. I'm going to give us a Force. So I'm going to grab this on the Z and move it up to the top here. Okay, so wh what I'm going to do now is give myself 280 frames, because that's how long I want my animation to be. And I'm going to go to frame 200. I'm going to press the original curve guide. I'm going to go into its settings. I'm going to, on frame 199, I'm going to press here on the three. I'm just going to give it a keyframe. Next frame, I'm going to give it one and then keyframe that. Okay, and then, um, on this same frame, I'm going to uh, give our field a strength of uh, zero and keyframe that. On the next frame, I'm going to give it a strength of negative 50. And then on like frame 260, I'm going to give it a keyframe. I'm going to keyframe again. And then on the next frame, I'm going to give it a keyframe of 50. Now in the opposite direction. So what this does, at first, it will be sucking everything in. So it's just going to start sucking everything in and then just like, make them explode. So that's, we're done with our animation. Okay, so now let's add the ornaments. So to do that is we just add in a um, icon sphere, shade it smooth, give it like control free, so give it three subdivisions, because we don't have that many particles. If you guys, if it's too much for you, use a view, viewport display of two, and it won't matter. So grab it on the X, I'm gonna bring it out here, and then I'm gonna shift it and add in another curve. So in the curve profiles, I'm gonna add in a star. Okay, so I'm gonna tap out of admin, bring that here. Okay, so in our star settings, we're gonna go to the, um, um, what are we called, the curve settings, and I'm gonna go into geometry and just increase the um, extrusion. So I'm gonna make it this wide, and then go down here and increase the depth also. So we have a star and we have a ball. Perfect, what do we do now? So what I wanna do now at this moment, I will, um, Go into the shading tab. So if we go into the shading tab, we can start shading our object. So what I want my sphere to look like. Wait, before that, I'm going to go 
choose a cube, my bad, and I'm gonna um, make sure that we're gonna be rendering out this as our objects, not as these halos. So we're gonna press collection and render as, and then we're gonna choose these two objects and press shift M to move into a new collection and call that collection ornaments. Ornaments, okay. So go back to the cube and instance collection ornaments. Okay, and I'm gonna increase the size to something like uh, 0.25. Somewhere. Okay, now we have our objects moving around. So what I want to do is start shading. Now we're actually going to be shading our object. So here I'm going to choose my sphere and I'm going to go in and add in a um, shift A and wave modifier. Wave texture, my bad. Wave texture. Okay, I'm going to plug that into the base color and then I'm going to add in a color ramp. So we've got our color ramp here. I'm going to bring this in a little bit. Okay. And then I'm gonna shift it and add an object info node. So what with this, we will just take only this thing, the random. So we want this to be every object to be different. But for now it looks a little weird. So what I need to do is press control T and give it a mapping node, a texture coordinate. So now this has fixed it up a little bit. Okay, but what we wanna do is on this mapping node is just increase the scale on all sides. And we have this, so we have different scales, different vectors, it's a bit more random. So I'm gonna also add distortion, random detail, um, and then just random detail roughness and random details scale. Okay, so now we've got different random spheres that are shaded differently. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna duplicate this color ramp, plug the color into the factor and plug the color into the roughness. So now where it's black, it's reflective and where it's white, it's not. And now I'm gonna just change the color of the white. So I'm gonna make my white parts uh, nice and green. I'm gonna make my black parts, black parts, nice and red. And there we have it. Here we have our spheres. Okay, but what I don't like is that they're so clumped up together and like this just looks bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, go into the uh, settings of the particles, into particle settings here. I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna add rotation and I'm gonna randomize rotation and then I'm gonna randomize this phase and then I'm gonna go here into the uh, render. I'm gonna also increase the scale randomness and I'm gonna use count. So this is gonna uh, tell us how many uh, of each object we have. So I'm gonna have five, two, three. So I'm gonna, for every five spheres, I have three stars. And then I'm just gonna um, choose like a random rotation. So I need to um, choose a random rotation. And now we need to refresh this. And yeah, we have random rotation. Okay, so this looks pretty good. And I'm gonna scale this, scale shift Z. I'm gonna scale it up a bit. And yeah, here we have it. Here we have all our objects moving around randomly. Okay, if we go back into a shading tab now, I can shade the star now, because now I can finally see it clearly. So basically, we're here we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to add in a magic texture. Magic texture, okay. Plug the color into here. And then I'm going to add in a color ramp. Plug the color ramp into here. And then I'm going to add an object info again. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to plan, plug the random into the distortion this time. So I'm going to change this to constant. Bring this out a little bit and we've got something like this. I'm gonna change the depth to three and then increase the scale a little bit. And now we see each star has a different pattern on it and it looks pretty cool. So yet again, duplicate this color ramp, plug the color into here and then color into the roughness. Perfect, we've got this going on. So I'm just gonna change the white to a, um, I'm gonna keep the white as a white. Actually, I'm gonna change the black into like a, teal or greenish color. Okay, and we're done. This is our whole animation. We can view it now in material preview for now. Perfect, okay. So now let's start lighting and making, fixing up our scene. So now I'm gonna decrease the light of the background so it's fully black. I'm gonna shift it, I'm gonna add in a plane, scale it up by eight, and then I'm gonna shift it, add in a light, so area light, I'm gonna change its settings to um, the shadow to make it contact shadow. And then I'm gonna grab on the Z, bring it up here, increase the power to like 800. OK, 
okay, now we have everything starting to light up. So now I need more lights. So I'm gonna scale this one up a bit. I'm gonna also change it into a disc because I'll like this. Grab that, bring it up here. And then shift D, duplicate it, bring it here. And then shift D, duplicate it, rotate it here. Okay, so we've got our scene set up. So what I'm gonna do now is also we have to, I wanted to add something in the middle here. So we have like a tree trunk in a sense. So what I'm gonna do is add in a cylinder, grab Z, bring it up, scale on scale on the ship Z. So I'm gonna scale it down a bit. And I'm gonna tab into edit mode, grab on the Z, and then I'm gonna scale on the scale to zero. Oh, control Z, my bad. And I didn't grab all the um, vertices. So I'm gonna grab on the Z, bring it up here, scale to zero. And there we have it. So if we tab out of edit mode, we can shade this move and add in a subdivision surface. Actually, yeah, so something like this. And we go into shading and just make it uh, no roughness and make it like a dark brown. So I'm just gonna make it something like this. Okay, there we have it. We have a tree trunk, we have our spheres moving around it and we can just light this finally. Um, we've lit this, so, so we can start running right now. So I'm just gonna shoot on the Z, this thing. I'm gonna add in a bevel, increase it a bit, um, shade smooth. And I'm gonna add in a camera, and I'm just gonna choose like a point I like to look at this. Control Alt, zero, scale this plane, scale me X more, and just move myself into frame. And then I'm going to grab on this object to on the X, and there we have it. So here we have our animation, but I'm also I would want to change the color of the background a little bit, so to give it that nicer uh, orangey color. Bum, and there we've gone. So just work around with the lights if you guys want to actually uh, if you want to render it out. So I've like plopped them really quickly, but that's pretty much the gist of it. So that's it. So now just go to the exporting tab, choose this FFmpeg choose uh, your file location, whatever, choose it, call it whatever you want. Um, and I'm gonna change this to the encoding to MP4 and then output quality perception of losses. And now if you press Control F12, you will start rendering your animation and you will get something like this. So I hope you guys like this and um, yeah, um, see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe, like, yeah, and see you in the next one. See you guys.